Uh, absolutely. Uh, I set up the video. Um, that's fantastic. Okay. So this is, this is very, very exciting. Um, I, it, I, I, I know you are a, a renowned member of the Flat Earth community. Um, and I have read your book, Flat Earth Clues. I actually have it with me right yeah, now. Yeah, I was about to uh, say, I don't get many things from people that actually read the book. You know, usually it's a video thing. Like they'll see, you know, like, like behind the curve, the Netflix thing or the um, – or other other stuff that's out there, different platforms. But the fact that you have the book, hey, great, wonderful, good for you. Yes, uh, it, it is. It is on loan to me, and it is yeah. a very interesting book. Certainly, very very fascinating. That book is just um, a transcript, just so you know, of the original clues, which turned nine years old in um, on the tenth. So that book, that book, you're, you're, is is eight years old. Believe it or not. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, just let me uh, grab my notebook so I can take. Some oh, absolutely! Notes on this. Do do whatever. Uh, you're just really just to summarize. Um, so where? Forgive me. Where's Dartmouth? It's in New Hampshire. So okay. I'm in like Western New Hampshire on the border with Vermont. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Part pardon my ridiculous posters. I'm in my dorm room. That's okay. No, I'm wow. looking. I'm looking at the stuff behind you. I actually some good stuff. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Rush. That surprises me. Yeah, it's like, I'm a big Rush fan. Wow. I mean, seriously, you, you are young to be a Rush fan, but that's awesome. And then what's that on the far side to your right? It, the... it says I need my space, NASA. Yeah, that's perfect, of course. And then what's a, what's a, what's the black poster right next to oh, that? It, it, it's Zelda. It's the oh, Zel Zelda. awesome. That's great. Yeah. I don't I've never seen a Zelda poster. <laughs> Uh, so I have I have the ironic poster, and then there's there is a map of New Hampshire is what the white thing is. In case you get lost, wanna, uh -huh, in case I get lost, yeah, oh, um, that's awesome. Yeah, and um, so yeah, so I, I guess we need to start with the kind of the big question, yeah, which is like, what was that moment that you went th that you became a flat earther? Uh the big moment for me actually came months after I made the clues. So, um, because again, when you, you know, you know, in 2014 was when I started researching it. Uh, I don't know. I can't even remember what the forward of the book is. Uh, and there's a second book out there, uh, uh, flat earth clues. Uh, uh, there's in fact, there's a free audio version you can listen to, uh, called flat earth clues, uh, end of the world. I had a little play on words there. Um, uh, but after I looked at it in 2014, when I made the clues in 2015, February 10th of, of 2015, I did not know what sort of reception I was going to get because I wasn't doing it for entertainment purposes. I was doing it to get a question answered, which was I, 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 I'm old enough and I remember the Internet when it was new. And I realized as the hive mind grew that the hive mind misses nothing. Right. You know, it, it all it takes is one nerd in his underwear at 3 a.m. in Nebraska to find something that everybody else missed uh there was something I, I i like mentioning the um the first lord of the rings movie again you're too young to remember which is the i'm first... a huge lord of the rings fan well okay the the first theater version <laughs> when the when the hobbits were leaving the shire there was a road in the upper right hand corner of frame with a white car driving through it and it was missed Meaning it's like it's like it made it all the way to the theaters and it was missed and they had to replace all the theater versions with a new cut to get rid of that because like, oh, my God, can you imagine the amount of people, how many people had watched all the different versions and the editing of that film? I mean, the mm -hmm. editors alone, because you're focused on the hobbits, right? And then somebody mm -hmm. drops their popcorn in a theater and they also look up in the corner just because that's where their eyes go. And they're like, what the hell is that car doing there? Right. And then all of a sudden the Internet, you know, goes freaking ballistic, you know, the Internet when it was new. So my point was, when I made the clues, I was hoping that I was wrong about this, meaning, uh, you know, that the world, all the world isn't a stage, as Shakespeare said. Right. You know, that we're not living in some sort of box, some sort of uh, soundstage, some planetarium. And that's why I put it out to the Internet, why, which is why one of the reasons you contacted me, you have my contact info. 
I put my contact info out everywhere, which you're absolutely not supposed to do on the internet. Well, I mean, women aren't supposed to do it. Men aren't really shouldn't, you know, because the trolls are out there. But I mean, my phone number, my physical address, uh, my email address, every way you could possibly get, way to get a hold of me. Yeah. And I thought that somebody would come back at me and just hammer the whole thing down and say, nope, this is where you screw. I was really hoping somebody from academia would. Somebody with a master's or a PhD in something would would do that. And they didn't. And over the next six months, the opposite happened. I had subject matter experts from all walks of life were contacting me with different, they were adding to it. It's like, no, man, it's not that crazy. Here's why, right? And they'd throw me stuff, you know, like all the branches of the military, um, air traffic controllers, pilots, uh, even, even people like um, travel agents that specialize in the Southern Hemisphere were contacting me and saying, yeah. You have no idea how weird it is to to do things. You know, it's it's different here than it is where you are. And so, for the first six months, I was waiting for the, for the other shoe to drop, and it didn't, and and it just kept compounding. So after that first six months, that's when I finally, it finally clicked to where it was like, oh, that's when I was sure. When I was making the clues, I was almost sure. Uh, again, you you know this. Do you, they still use blue books in in university? Blue book tests. Where you have to write out like essay answers to things? No. Um, we typically do that. I, 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 I've been this particular term. I don't have a lot of. Essay that's a, that's all right. That's that's all right. Yeah. I, so I, I, I'm it, taking a lot of math. When you turn in a test, yeah. When you think you've aced it, but you're not positive you've aced it, right? And and you and you want to put it in, and it's like, man, did I get it? Did I get it? And that's that was my reaction, which was I was pretty sure I had it. I'm pretty sure I had the 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 model I, that I had the, the the general framework done, and it, but I was nervous that it was going to get shot down by somebody. But again, that was the point of, of doing it. That's the point of, of doing the flat Earth clues. And no, it didn't. And now nine years later, now it's now it's morphed into something completely different, which is which is awesome. now 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 this is this is your truth on this that's oh this, yeah this now is, now it is now it's been reinforced by so many people in so many different walks of life and uh again if you let's put it this way flat earth is so ridiculous you know the first impressions are so ridiculous and so silly that you should have been able to shoot it down within a year or if not instantaneously and that's where the problem comes because every scientist that even you know dares touch it because most of them it's like oh it's beneath me i'm not even going to address it every time scientists it kind of oh you the 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 analogy would be a, a boxing match which is scientists gets into a boxing ring you know with a with a flat earther metaphorically speaking and if that flat earther survives the first round People aren't looking at the flat earther anymore, you know, laughing. They're looking at the scientists going, why haven't you knocked this guy out yet? Why, why is he still standing? And every round that happens after that, it gets worse. And there's then they're yelling to where all of a sudden you've got other guys tagging in for the scientists. It's like, get out of there. It's like, I will take care of this guy. And then that guy can't do it. And then that guy can't do it. And it just goes on and on and on to where, again, nine years and we are doing... I, I can't even begin to tell you how many conferences and meetups uh, and, and I mean, the podcasts are freaking endless. They run constantly all the time uh, to where, you know, even now the celebrities, which used to be in the closet, there are more and more of them coming out. You know, I've got a playlist on my channel of all sorts of cool uh, little celebs and yeah, they get attacked right away. Um, and, and because when, the, the cool thing, one of the cool things about becoming one of us is once it hits you, you forget the journey, which is a blessing and a curse. And so you are totally overconfident and you come like Kyrie Irving, the perfect example, you know, the, uh, the basketball star. Do you have any connection to Kyrie Irving? Um, no, I've no. And which I didn't expect to, I've got, I've got connections to other people, but not him. Um, and I, but I always, I always wanted to, but at the same time, it's, it's cool. Everybody knows it's like, yeah, 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 it's fine. You know, they can, but he, but you can always, we can always tell who's faking it and who's not. And he absolutely was not faking it. I knew exactly why, why he came out, which was he had just won, you know, won his title, you know, LeBron James was his best friend, you know, ring still, you know, still on his finger. 
flying to the all-star game that season right so yeah and so the glow he was just absolutely high on freaking life he's what 24 at the time and his one of his best friends is running a podcast on the plane you know just recording it and he asks him and Kyrie just goes for it it's like yeah absolutely it's freaking flat here's why just starts snapping off uh plot you know points and and of course uh his friend releases it as soon as they hit the ground and it was media day that next morning. What do you think the media is going to do? Right. The irreparable part. Like, yeah. I mean, you are correct in saying like at first impression, the, the, the idea of a flat earth is something that really runs counter to even the most fundamental assumptions of modern. Absolutely. Like, science, science is based on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at least at least sciences concerned with the earth are based on it. So your geology, geography, um, any sort of astro, the, the flat Every, earth yeah. theory kind of it spits in the face of contemporary astrophysics as you, right. I, I, with with the whole concept of the firmament as opposed to there being sort of an, an infinite expanse of space above us. Right. Um, as as is as conventional science sort of communicates of course and and that's it that's a so i mean as a as a flat earther how did you get over that initial aversion to subscribe into this theory that kind of goes against what we've been told this whole time well well first of it took me longer because there was way less content on online um when yeah. you went in before they ripped out the the search engine out of youtube the the metrics because of us by the way um the when you typed in flat earth into youtube back in 2015 me you might might have had 20, uh, 50 000 search results and that's not 50 000 videos that's everyone that's ever referenced it anywhere uh, uh on mm. in the youtube world even in comments and when they finally tore down the scoreboard entirely in 2018, three years later, we were at 20.9 million and the, the 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 search results. And I've got a playlist I can send you. I documented the whole thing and I knew what was happening because I was one of the, I'm a huge stat nut and I was tracking the whole thing and we were climbing the charts fast and we were climbing way faster than all those posers that were buying subs, for example, you know, like PewDiePie when he had what, 60 million, a mere 60 million subs, he was only showing up with 5 million search results. It's like, well, that's kind of odd guy with 60 million subs. What that means is nobody's talking about him in relatively compared to his numbers. Uh, or, um, so, but the people that were coming up with massive search results that were ahead of us, for example, were, I mean, we passed by the Beatles in the first two years and Warcraft and the Simpsons and stuff like that. We're just, just ripping past them. And we passed Lady Gaga and I was going, wow, this thing's got some legs on it. And there were only four, there were, there was a handful of people ahead of us, you know, small players like Donald Trump. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, who's now a whole nother level, and um, uh, and Justin Bieber, got people like that. And I remember Donald Trump was ahead of us. We were sitting at like I don't know, pushing eighteen million, and he was sitting around twenty, and we were climbing faster than him. And it's like, yeah, I think we can catch him, right? I think we can we can get it. It's going to take us six months. It didn't even take us six weeks. And all of a sudden, we were at 20.9 and they were 20.8. And I remember making the video. And in fact, I put it in my playlist. I'll, I'll send it to you for, for reference. And I, I was cocky enough to make a video called Flat Earth Catches the President of the United States. And then a few weeks later, I get this phone call from, from one, of my, one of my friends. He goes, dude, the scoreboard's gone. And I go, oh, are they stunting the numbers? Why are they ratioing us? What, what, what's happening? He goes, no, no, no. It's gone. He's going, the search results line isn't there anymore. And I was going, what are you talking about? I was going, you can't pull out the whole search results line. That's that's internet, that's search engine 101. It's been there since the internet was brand new. Search results equals a number. And you know, you go and and plus Google owns YouTube. So I mean, they why would they, you know, they 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 wrote the book on search engines. And it's like, oh yeah, we were getting we were getting so hot. Somebody wanted to slow us down. I don't know why. I don't know if there's a overarching theme to this. I'm a conspiracy guy. 
I still can't figure it out. I mean, for the first three years, we were promoted heavily. If you've never seen the documentary, by the way, um, Social Dilemma, watch it. Uh, in fact, Wait, is, is that the one where it's like they're talking about like the different influences of social media on people? I think I have seen. Well, it. yeah, the, the, the social social dilemma is about it's it's the interview, all the creators of all the different social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And they and they all are regretting creating this Frankenstein monster, which is now just running through the countryside with a reckless abandon. Um, the other one I highly recommend for your generation anyway, if you've never seen it, is. Um, uh fake famous you ever seen that one i have not seen it oh. i uh I, I can i can understand a lot of probably the theme it is brilliant the where you know a producer in hollywood picks does a casting call grabs six kids and makes them famous for doing nothing you know basically buying yeah. buying hits and uh, likes and subs and you're a gamer so you'll you'll get this yeah. which was who would have thought you know back in the day because i was a, a you know again i played video games for a living uh, at one point, and uh, I was a very good Warcraft guy. And when the Pacific Rim nations were selling Warcraft gold to Americans, right, because they could, right, they were mining Warcraft gold, and then all of a sudden social media took went up a, a notch, and somebody over there figured out, they, they again, it must have been the most amazing light bulb where they said, wait a minute, what's the difference between Warcraft gold and likes and hits? Can't they be mined just the same freaking way? And will the Americans buy them? Yeah, they will. In fact, they'll everyone, you know, not everyone plays Warcraft, obviously. Everybody's into social media. And so all of a sudden you have these waves and waves of kids that were like, the, they realized street cred is social media cred. Therefore, I'm going to buy, you know, I'm going to spend money, you know, because it's relatively cheap, relatively, you know, unless you're really going for broke. And the, the guy from the documentary, I, I, I know I'm going off in another direction, but let me get this out really fast. He said, you'll, you'll get this. He goes, he goes, there are millions of kids, again, I'm older, uh, that have uh, at least 100,000 followers on Instagram. Well, there's only like 10,000 famous people in the world at any given time. Who are all these people with 100,000 followers? <laughs> I, I honestly, I can honestly feel the same way that there, there's just too many people with too many followers. Too, too many too numbers. Much of that. It's all phantom. Uh, yeah, this, man. yeah, and and yeah. Okay. It's all, it's all, it's all fake. But I get it. I get it. Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, that is your credibility. So why, why, you know, perceived that's out there? Why wouldn't you buy it? You know, it's the it's the ash experiment all over the place. ASCH, which is, uh, you know, if everybody's, do, you know, every, go with the herd. You know, if, if everyone around if the peer peer pressure, as you know, uh, I don't know what your specialty is, but peer pressure is the, the most powerful thing out there when it comes to um, human beings, you know, just interacting with each other. Uh, you know, the, the famous experiments, you know, you're gone going on for years where you put like six people in an elevator. Right. And that are actors. And then you have a, a normal person walk in and six of those people turn and face the wrong wall. And almost yeah. inevitably that other person is going to face that wall because you know, for multiple reasons and they do. I, I will reveal that I, I am doing this for a psychology class. Perfect. Even, on psychology. even better. Right. So, mm -hmm. and, and one of the most terrifying experiments since you're in that for me, which I've told, talked about on, on many a thing, is the Milgram experiment, the famous Milgram, mm -hmm. Milgram experiment, which the people, look, I summarized it for a lot of people. I go, the, the Milgram experiment basically, basically comes down to this. As long as there's somebody there in a lab coat holding a clipboard that you can defer to with, to authority, there is a 60% chance that you're going to kill a perfect stranger. 60%. And remember, the initial, the initial test with the people that created the test years and years and years ago thought that it would only be like 4% and it was 60. And then if you add another person right, you know, next to you pushing another elect, you know, electric shock button that goes up to 90%. It's like, Oh my mm -hmm. God, human, human beings, we are wired in a real, so I do not blame <laughs> anybody for, you know, you know, when you see sci-fi movies that say that, Oh, human beings are savage and should never be allowed off this world ever. It's like, yeah, damn right. We shouldn't. Boxes. <laughs> yeah. We're horrible. I, if we could move back a little bit more towards yeah, the, uh, the initial flat earth argument. Um, yeah. 
that was a, that was a that was a very enlightening little uh, little conversation there. But well, do people regularly try to debunk you? I mean, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but do you ever get someone on the street who who like or like someone at a conference who's like, hey, like, and they're they're like, oh, you're dumb. All this stuff can be explained by a, something at, else. At a conference, no, because the the peer pressure. Remember, you're you're going into the lion's den. If you're going into a conference, yeah. so we will have, you know, some, some high level trolls that will show up at conferences, but they're only doing it for the clicks. They're there. They've got somebody filming there. They, they're they, It's not about debunking it. It's about trying to, you know, yell at the roofs off flat earth is dumb and then get out before we can, you know, tar and feather them. Um, as far as individuals go though, most of the time, uh, because of just my demeanor, People will just come at me with questions. They'll they won't they won't say flat earth is stupid and here's why. They'll say, All right, I don't believe in flat earth. Answer me this, right? If the earth is flat, what about if, if, again, what about blank or how does blank work? I get that. Yeah. Nonstop. Absolutely freaking nonstop. But it's not a it's not a debunking thing. I can tell. They're just there's a the difference. Those people are curious. They, they want to I, know. I have, I, I even myself have, have some, some legitimate questions oh, about the mechanic. Sure. Yeah. Um, like certain things like, um, I'm whatever. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Okay. The question that I had written down was how do you respond to well-meaning counter arguments against, uh, against this worldview, which you were about to answer anyways. So oh. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, anybody, anybody that comes at me sincerely that doesn't try to do again you, from your neck of the woods, you know, the Dunning Kruger effect thing on me, which I just just cracks me up, by the way. Dunning Kruger effect that you take a childhood insult, which is you're too dumb to know how dumb you are. Right. We've all heard this, you know, growing up and you stretch that out and flesh it into a dissertation. And then it gets published, and now it is used everywhere. The the Dunning Kruger effect, which is like you're too stupid to know. How That's really what the Dunning Kruger effect is. Really, at, at its base level, it's you know you just use you're just using a higher vocabulary to describe it. It's like well, obviously the person you know lacks the intellect to understand how how low his IQ is. Right? It's like yeah. that. That is literally. I mean, I the Dunning Kruger effect. It's like like really. That's a PhD. Somebody got a PhD for that. Whatever. Um, but as far as well-meaning people, I don't mind uh, anyone that's respectful, anyone that doesn't you know, come at me with insults, because uh, I was them, right? Everybody in our community, and it's not in, in the book you read. And by the way, again, thank you for, for flashing the book up on there. Again, most people just watch watch videos. Um, did, by the way, did you ever see the, the Netflix documentary? Uh, I, I did not get the chance to see the Netflix documentary. Oh, you got to watch it. It'll totally book. help you. Totally. I, I will be watching it throughout and, this week. And if you want, I can send you a dissertation um, that was done by a woman uh, at the Sorbonne in uh, in Paris. Who, there's been a number of people who've done dissertations on this. I might even help you. And and uh, she got her she got her freaking doctorate partially based on this. Anyway. So oh, was this on the Dunning Kruger effect? No, no, it was just done on flat Earth and, and conspiracies in oh, general. Oh, but it was it was on was, alternative thinking and conspiracies focusing on flat Earth. And, and oh, how absolutely, get... I would I, honestly, I would love to read this paper. Oh, I'll I'll absolutely send it to you as soon as we're done. The um uh and and uh, I I've even got the uh, uh the audio for it. I'll send you the audio for it as well. The um cute by the way, <laughs> really cute. Uh, where was I going with this? So. If yeah, if you're respectful, I don't mind because I used to be you. And I'm talking not necessarily you, but somebody else. Because mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I would have laughed people out of the room, which is why the very first couple paragraphs of, of the Flat Earth Clues talked about, and it wasn't a one of wasn't a, a hypothetical situation. It was I had friends that absolutely believed that the royal family was made out of lizard people, right? Which is a whole nother conspiracy. And yet, and I'm going, uh-huh. And I go, and what about Flat Earth? And they go, get the hell out of here. It's like, what are you talking about? You just gave me the lizard people speech. That's how, <laughs> that's how, once you understand that, that it's that big, it's that encompassing, where I've had other conspiracy people yell at me 
because they say that flat earth is a distraction from actual conspiracies. It's so ridiculous you you shouldn't be able to even throw it out there that I don't I don't mind. It's hypocritical for me to yell at people and get mad at people because look, I was in that same cap. Everybody hates it. Uh, when they first start out, the T-shirt literally reads, "I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk it." That's how every, it's like the La Brea tar pits. You get sucked in, trying to disprove it, and then after a certain amount of time, you give up, or you don't give up, and then you know you move on and try to do whatever. But it, it really turns into like a, a marble in a paint can. The paint can being your head, which is you can't get rid of it. It's just there. So you either have to freaking deal with it and just bury it somewhere or you have to resolve yourself to it's like, yeah, it might be actually be actually possible. So yeah, very, very interesting. Um, why do you think the flat earth phenomenon has grown so much in the past 20 years? As, as you, you mentioned in your book, it's obviously nothing new. Well, you're right. It's, it's nothing that... new. And it's not uh, two two things, two reasons why the flat earth has grown so much. And it hasn't even really been the last 20 years. It's been the last 10 uh, that's that's the yeah. big thing. Um, the first is social media, straight up. Let's just call it what it is, which is YouTube. If it wasn't for YouTube, you and I were, wouldn't even be talking. Uh, the and and if it wasn't YouTube, it would have been somebody else. You know, it's the biggest whatever the biggest social media platform was was gonna was gonna grab hold of this. Once people, it was it because it appeared like a new rabbit hole, which, which just still surprises me. It's like, look, it's not a new concept, right? but it was never on social media. So Flat Earth has been around for a long, long, long time. You know, again, you, you type into Google ancient cosmologies and click on images, you'll see everybody, every culture drew the same freaking thing. And I don't care about the Greeks right now because they tried to, tried to get, away, get around it with math. But everybody drew the same thing. And then when science started building their foundations, let's say five centuries ago, the kind of went away because the the first foundation was well it's a globe so every other every other you know psychology and hydrology and archaeology every ology freaking was built partially on that not to mention you know um astronomy and astrophysics and and um, geology especially and so social media helped do that and the but one of the other things though that really really helped and i don't get a chance to say this much mm -hmm. is um HD technology of all things. Uh, you know, we've we've had computer technology for a long time, but HD cameras really changed the game. At no point in those clues did I ever tell anyone to run out to a beach and start shooting long distance photography. In fact, it's nowhere in the book. Anyway, I've never even brought it up. But people instinctively did that. And I don't, I still don't know exactly who started it. Because it's like, oh, well, water lays flat. Therefore, I should be able to look across a, a calm body of water and, and see things. And they did. And they everyone started reporting back to me. It's like, oh, yeah, it's flat. It's flat. It's flat. It's flat. And it's like, what? And and 30 years ago, you couldn't have done that because our cameras just weren't that good. You know, it, the resolution wasn't that good. You could have a $3,000 shoulder-mounted camera and shoot a, a lighthouse uh, 80 miles away and it would just be this freaking blocky blob. Uh, but now you can get a... $500 off the shelf piece of crap and it'll you the the zoom the technology we've had is really really great yeah our future may not be what we always wanted you know we don't have flying cars or ray guns or robot servants but uh but phones and computer tech now now that we could jam every computer tech into very very small devices it changed everything because most of the people that get into flat earth are brought in because of long distance photography most of them. And I'm by that, I mean probably 80% of them, which is sad because I don't think it's even the most convincing argument. Uh, but that's what they, you know, give the people what they want. It's like, you want to do long distance photography? Fine. Everybody focused on that. If taking long distance photography over the ocean is not the best argument for the earth being flat, what would you say is the best argument for the earth? Well, being flat? I think the best, uh, for the lowest common denominator, because the general public, come on, is not bright. Uh, they're they're just not. You know, the the general public is this is. I mean, mob. They they call it mob rules for a reason. Um, visual. They they like a very simple narrative. Long distance camera. You know, they like small word words, small sentences. But for me, it's always been um, uh, gravity versus the vacuum of space. It it's 
easy to explain, but because visually you can't figure it out because uh, if you've ever hung out with science students that deal with vacuum chambers, a vacuum chamber looks no different than what we've got in front of us right now. It's invisible to us. You know, we cannot see the 80% um, nitrogen and 20% oxygen that's in your room, in my room right now. We can't see it. It's not in our visual spectrum. So when you suck all that away, it doesn't look any different. So that doesn't, that has no impact when you're trying to tell people. It's like, okay, if you make this room nothing, right, no molecules in it, and people, that's when you lose people immediately. It's like, well, I, I don't, I don't get it. It's like, oh God. But the point, the point of that is, is that like, say there was a vacuum chamber above you, right? In, in the second story of wherever you are, and there's a valve and you pop that valve. What happens? It's instant. It's not like the movies at all, right? It's absolutely, there's some wonderful submarine, horrible tragedies and deep sea oil rig crap where the pressure differential equalizes instantaneously. I mean, it's within a fraction of a second, all the air in your room equalizes with, with upstairs. You're probably going to get sucked up in that hole. Somebody's going to die, right? Yeah. Well, that's a problem because when you go outside, you are sitting in a place where, you know, there's tons of atmosphere right next to the biggest vacuum chamber of all time, supposedly, which is space, which is a perfect vacuum, relatively speaking. And oh, vacuum enough, much lower pressure than Earth. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll just call it 99.999 to the whatever. But but it's a it's might as well be a perfect vacuum. Why is our atmosphere still here? And the only answer you have, the only knee-jerk response is, well, gravity. I go, oh, okay. You mean the gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room from coming upstairs? The exact same gravity? Why is our atmosphere still here? And scientists will not touch it. They will They. They will hum and ha. I have never had an academic come at me and say, oh, you know, and try to break it down. It's like, I go, what happens at the bleeding edge of space? What happens where our atmosphere ends and the vacuum of space begins? I didn't make up the rules, by the way. That's straight up thermodynamics, which is pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier. That's that's straight up thermodynamics. That's your law, not mine. I'm not picking on you. That's just your community. And I even had a girl once, a young physicist from Europe when I was over there. And she says, well, you know, it just gets thinner and thinner to bear where it gets to the point where it's just, you know, it's just tickling, you know, just a few molecules next to the vacuum of space. I go, that's not how it works, honey. Uh, what happens is, it, and again, I'll use the, uh, the, the packing popcorn box for you. So you get an Amazon box, right? And it's empty. Right? And there's a little piece of tape on the bottom and it's got some packing popcorn in it. What happens when you pick up the box? Nothing. Packing popcorn is super, super light and nothing happens. Okay, fine. Put the box back down. Put a whole bunch of heavy books on top of that box. Try to pick that box up. What happens? The, the weight of those books just punches right through the bottom of that box, takes the packing popcorn with it. The power of a vacuum cannot be underestimated in any way, meaning the edge of space does not care about the little, little fluffy bits, supposedly, uh, you know, at the edge of Earth. It's going after everything. It's taking that and whatever's behind it all the way down to the ocean. And it's going to take the oceans as well uh, because oceans, by the way, at, at um, uh, room temperature, boil in a vacuum instantly. They would be evaporated within seconds. So again, <clears throat> what people say, you know, what holds our atmosphere here? And and I would, you know, then they're going to say gravity. I go, because and, and here's get circular logic. I'll say, how do you know it's gravity? Because if it isn't gravity, we'd all be dead. And I go, that's the only reason then. It can't be anything else but gravity. It can't be like, I don't know, a pressurized system. You can't be living in a snow globe. No, that's just stupid. But it can't be that. It has to be gravity, even though gravity loses to the vacuum, to a vacuum and every day, all the time. It loses. You know, when you're when you're sucking a um uh, a soda out of a straw, right? You're creating a, a small vacuum force. You're you're drinking soda using the power of a vacuum. Gravity doesn't stand a chance against a vacuum. And, and any any science student will tell you this. So how does it happen? Anyway, sorry, that's that's my favorite. But that that explanation I just gave you, that took a while, and you still got to get your head around it. People people yeah. love the easy stuff, which is why they 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 are drawn to long distance photography because they don't want to think about that. Like it's like, no, that's too hard. It's like, all right. They, they don't want to think they don't want to think about like the, the existential horror of the of the the earth's atmosphere being sucked up yeah that too we, yeah the, which is and and 
if you're a scientist, you know, the uh, they don't want to face. Unfortunately, it's it's sad because when you are when you have enough education, you've had so much and I'm not I'm not picking you've had so much conditioning in your field that you're going to defend it, even even if whatever's in front of you go straight against it you're going to defend it if you can and i feel bad because sometimes it's like look even if i could convince like an astrophysicist to to go against this what what do i benefit what do i gain from that right they're just going to curl up into a ball and start drinking in a field fetal yeah. position somewhere in a corner and they're not they're going to pull the drapes and not come out for a while because it's a big deal plus again if you spent so much money in your education uh it's it's a it's a tough sell but uh, anyway, that's that's my favorite. There's others out there that are fun, but the bulk of people go with it. A friend of mine said, he goes, you want to be rich? He goes, find a way to make people lazier. That's how you get rich. <laughs> and and that applies to everything. Even even our our team, even though our teams love doing research and stuff, they like the easy research. It's easy to run down somewhere with a camera and, and take. Yeah. Notes. And of course, now that everybody's doing it for everything, why wouldn't you? So anyway. Um, do you believe that at, at any point in time, the scientific establishment will adopt a flat earth perspective? Not willingly <laughs> and not easily. Uh, I'll give you an example, which you'll, you'll kind of dig, uh, which is the, um, a, a small example that, that how the, the pushback starts. There's a fish out there, prehistoric fish called the coelacanth. C O E L uh, C A N T H, right? Really ugly fish with a bunch of extra fins, a bunch of teeth. You know, part of this. I, I've heard of I've, I've heard of coelacanths. They, they found one in the Indian Ocean a few. Oh no 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 no! They found a whole bunch of them, but the problem was is that before they found it, it was absolutely extinct. It was extinct for seventy million years, and every scientist in the world would have bet the freaking farm that it was. A, they had the fossils because remember the fossils look identical to the freaking fish that, that are still out there. And then um, the British Navy again, it's not like some drunk fisherman found it. The British Navy got one in a net right, nineteen thirty eight, and then they of course you know, contacted the London Historical Society or whatever it was, and they uh, and they said we got one of these fish, and, and they denied. It. It's like no, you didn't. They absolutely did not denial first reaction always right you 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 made a mistake it can't be that fish it's obvious it's sitting there in stone on our wall it's absolutely been extinct for 70 million years and then another one was found in mozambique and then another one of madagascar and finally they realized holy smokes they're all over africa they're just basically swimming all around africa to where national geographic you know some years ago you can swim with them basically anytime you want they don't even they're not even hostile from what i can tell so the question is, is why did every scientist in the world get it 100% wrong? And that's because uh, peer pressure and they made massive assumptions, uh, which was, well, they are in fossils, therefore they have to be gone. We carbon dating these fossils, they have to be, they, they, they have to be correct. And they weren't to where they had to backpedal and make up new terms. It's like, oh, it's a living fossil. And it's in an evolutionary state of stasis. It's like, okay, so that's your way of saying that you were wrong and this is just some weird anomaly because they don't want to, again, but what you were kind of saying, they don't want to face the fact that it's like, well, because they have to explain. It's like, what's it been doing for the last 60 million years, man? Unless your carbon dating is wrong. In fact, let me segue into one more thing really quick. You'll, you might be able to use this. People say, um, do, do I believe in the Loch Ness Monster, right? Yeah. Is there a plesiosaur swimming around one of the one of the lakes in Scotland? Right. Why not? Right. Yeah. Why Why wouldn't there be a plesiosaur swimming around in the lakes of Scotland? Uh, you know, you're talking about a dinosaur, and and here's the argument, right? I, I go, why? I, I'd say, okay, why isn't it? Well, because it's been extinct. Plesiosaur has been extinct for at least a hundred million years. Oh, you mean like that fish? That fish. So you were wrong about the fish, but you're one hundred percent right about this. About the law, about plesiosaurs just dodging us in a murky lake. We just haven't found one. Okay. Okay, sure. And if you're wrong about that, what else could you be wrong about? Again, science drives me nuts sometimes because, you know, or, you know, little things like the double slit experiment, which is akin to magic. Double experiment, you know, double slit experiment, which we can, which we do in computer graphics all day long. 
you know, which if you're not observing it, it's not being rendered is is completely, which is basically what the double six experiment is. And and science comes back and says, well, it's repeatable. Therefore, it's under the umbrella of science. I'm going, well, yeah, it's repeatable, but you can't explain it. It's like, doesn't matter. It's repeatable. It's ours. It's like, oh, God, you guys are killing me. Anyway, sorry, my little mini rant. Yeah. So so what you're saying is that things like the double slit experiment or in the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. I, I feel I feel like you just brought up like two separate points that that I think are both correct. So you're saying that the Loch Ness Monster. We can't prove that the Loch Ness Monster doesn't exist except by assumptions that we make about other. We just other haven't things, seen yeah. any other plesiosaurs. Therefore, there's no plesiosaur there. Right. If, yeah, if there's no, as the saying goes, if they're thin on the ground, if you haven't found any plesiosaurs, they're probably extinct. That's like, yeah, but that's science's stance. It's like, until we have one in a lab, it hasn't happened. And I go, yeah, but when it comes to things like cryptozoology, you do that, you were, your track record is not good, right? They absolutely laughed at the giant panda idea, right, for example. It's like, wait a minute, there's a big, cuddly bear variant black and white that just rolls on its back and eats bamboo all day yeah sure we're gonna buy that and honestly if i was a scientist i would have laughed at that one too absolutely absolutely myth until somebody grabbed one and put it in a cage and sent it to them um the giant anaconda absolutely a myth they don't get that big it's, well i mean i still think by the way i'll, I'll throw one more out you i still think there's a speed there are species out there that don't get reported because they don't live to tell about it. I think there's some. There was a myth of something again, myth from going years back, all the way to the 50s of of uh, what I call the Goliath cobra, right? We, you know, a cobra that is absolutely freaking massive. You know, with a head the size of a horse. And then you think about it, it's like you know the first guy that discovers the Goliath cobra, right? It's like, oh my god, I gotta sketch this thing, right? I gotta get a picture. And then you realize, oh hey, it's a cobra, right? I hope you can run fast because you're not getting out of this, right? Um, or, or one of my favorites, which again, science had to de had to deal with eventually, which was the giant squid. Giant squid. We've never caught one of the big ones ever. We're never going to catch one of the big ones. They're too huge. They're too fast. Our best subs can't catch these damn things. We only know they exist because whale hunters found the freaking tentacle marks on the side of sperm whales, which did come up to the surface, and they were the size of garbage can lids. And they found their beaks because that was the only things that could fight these things and win mm -hmm. in the pitch blackness. Talk about creepy. And then they had to, they had to, you know, finally admit, so, okay, there's a, there's a giant race of squid out there, you know, different from like the, uh, the, the whole Kraken myth. By the way, that's a whole other thing real fast. You want to look up something? I know I'm all over the place, but I'm throwing I'm throwing all sorts of crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, um, you want to look up something, look up the, the myth of giant octopus, which is uh, little known facts that uh, females die during childbirth and males die during insemination. So octopuses, but if neither of them mate, they don't stop growing. But it's really, really rare that an octopus never mates. But there's these weird stories about octopus living in, in uh, caves in the Caribbean, in, in underground cave systems that, that never mated. They were just freaking monstrous that, uh, you know, sometimes come up and grab things offshore, you know, because they're one of the smartest animals on Earth. Anyway, sorry. I ramble. Yeah. Keep going. No, what no, no. It's totally okay. What you got? Totally okay, the rambling. Okay. Um, so the other thing, yeah. if the earth is f flat, right. then why have so many cultures and societies subscribed to the earth being a globe, a sphere? Right. Yeah. Oh, by the way, thank you for bringing up sphere because uh, lots of people will say um, round. And it's like, well, round is two dimensional too. You know, like a dinner plate is round, a hubcap is round. Uh, so we use sphere and ball and globe. Uh, well, because I think it was put in place. 500 plus 500 years ago i think it was rolled out remember 500 years ago most of the population couldn't read and write uh so i think it was introduced by whoever built this place oh, partially i mean yeah there you know all you have to do is put the bug in the ear of certain scientists if you want infiltrate them i know that sounds like a really fringe conspiracy but when you i understand even why you would introduce the globe into this thing so if everyone was drawing snow globes for thousands of years right 
why did it all of a sudden change to a globe 500 years ago, roughly, and then introduced into the public? I am a big believer that whoever built this, because remember, if it's a snow globe, if it's a building, then somebody built it, right? And I'm not claiming one religion over another necessarily. I'm just saying that it was built by someone that was older than us. We didn't build it. Um, you introduced it into the population to keep people from looking. So I use the argument of uh, the wildlife preserve. You'll get this, which is uh, you have a, wild, a thousand acre wildlife preserve, right? And you have a few buffalo running around in it. Yeah, maybe a hundred, couple hundred buffalo. Why not? They're perfectly happy, right? And it's 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 encased by this fence. They, they got food, they got water, they got all sorts. It's wonderful. They don't care. Fine. Add a dozen humans into that, right? You know where the humans are going to hang out? They're going to hang out next to that fence. That's all they care about is the fence. Who built the fence? Why are we on this side of the fence? Who's on the other? Did, did, what, what, who, did we, what gods made the fence? Did we anger the fence gods? Should we sacrifice something to the fence gods? Grab some of those buffalo. Let's cook those things up. That's how it would go, right? So what's the easiest way to do that? You tell people there is no fence. And then even when the industrial revolution comes along, I mean, come on, until the internal combustion engine is created, we really didn't have jack. You know, we had, we had horses, we had some steam engines, we had some wooden ships. Right? That's, that's all we had. Once you've got the internal combustion engine, that's when everything changed. And then when the powers that be, because that could be one of your follow-up questions, you, who, why would you ever hide this thing? The power, we, didn't, we didn't even figure it out until about 1960. And it was us and the Soviet Union were the first ones. And then once you figure it out, do you tell everybody? It's a tough question because remember, civilization's already been built. The infrastructure's already there. I wouldn't tell them either. We're just not ready for that sort of thing. I mean, seriously, think of the chaos. I, I've asked journalists this, you know, uh, I'll drop a name. Piers Morgan. I threw that right at him. I go, really, Piers? You'd break that story, right? And I could see it in his eyes. Once he, you know, it's like, okay probably wouldn't break this story because you don't know what could happen i mean it, it you the the chaos that might ensue afterwards would be incredible so you just hold on to the secret and that's by the way which is what makes this conspiracy so great is that we had nothing to do with it all we're doing is keeping a secret that was already there every other conspiracy seems to be man-made for the most part and you know you can bury secrets in the desert with the exception of ufos but that's a whole nother thing anyway sorry yeah no 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 i'm 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 very engaged with that yeah. you mentioned the greeks earlier the greeks had a round earth cosmology as well and they were they did. prior to that 500 years ago time mark with copernicus and, and galileo and, right. and those people so you what is the explanation and, and you you alluded to having an explanation for why the greeks right 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 okay were first off uh, to quote to quote a um uh, uh the the series rome screw the greeks all right the greeks made massive assumptions based on things they did not even remote granted the greeks were very very smart no question right rome owes a lot to the greeks a lot of people owe a lot to the greeks but they were still technologically very very limited one you didn't have a map it's like okay fine you want to use the six and shadows argument to try to prove that the earth is a sphere through math that's fine but you're making a massive assumption. And one is you know, that you know the size of the sun, which you don't, and that the um, and you know the distance of the sun, which you don't, right? It's not so why why do I say this? So yes, the sticks and shadow argument works great if the sun is hundreds of thousands of miles wide and 93 million miles away. Sure. But it also works just as well like with anything with perspective, which is why we do it with video games and just about everything in Hollywood, if the object is very, very close and very, very small. So if the sun is only a few thousand miles away and say 70 miles wide, you know, instead, or it may not even be freaking 3D for all we know, then it works just as well. And that's what most people don't want to talk about. And it's like, and again, I don't have to deal with that question most of the time anyway, because remember what we said, the average, you know, Johnny Lunchbox, yeah, they're they're not big on the whole six and shadows. I could I could spend an hour on six and shadows with them. And they're still not going to get it. So, but, it, but it's like no, it it worked. You can do do a flashlight with little sticks in the ground and do the the same experiment all day long. 
and it works just well. And the, the, I, I throw that at scientists. It's like, look, the object doesn't have to be this massive, massive thing really, really, really far away. It has to, you know, if it's really close, works just great. Which is, by the way, how they screwed up the moon missions. One of the reasons they screwed up the moon missions, which was they couldn't create a light source for the Apollo missions that was 93 million miles away. The stage lighting, they backed it up as far as they could, and the shadows still started to intersect. And that was a big problem. But the average person doesn't remember from their junior high science class that shadows always run parallel from the sun. Because it's one light source. It's 93 million miles away. They should never move off into different directions. Stage lighting people didn't remember this. Anyway, I assume the moon landing being fake is almost trivial to the flat Earth. It the well NASA as a whole. Um, what happens is yeah. when it the first when you first get into flat Earth, you immediately try it, when you when you're trying to debunk it. Almost everybody leans on NASA to try. You know, NASA will save us. You know, I'll just look at a whole bunch of NASA stuff and that'll make me feel better. But it has not aged well over the years. Uh, the the technology they had in the 60s, again, like with any production, right, it comes down to the weakest thing. And that was they hired photographers to shoot the, the still shots for Apollo. And the photographers are not physicists. Therefore, all they cared about is like, we want perfect lighting. By the way, you got to remember that all those shots that were taken on the moon, they didn't even have a viewfinder, right? They, they were just taking shots blind. They literally did not know what they were shooting. You know, they did not know it was in freaking frame. And they came up with these beautiful, iconic shots. They were too good. And meanwhile, the, the video was way too grainy. Way, and that, there's a whole other story for another time. But yes, Nat, we, everyone leans on NASA. And it's the equivalent of going into a room that, that you stack ceiling high with boxes of evidence, right? It's like, oh, yeah, I can shut down. I did the same thing. I, I can shut down Flat Earth using nothing but NASA stuff. And you're going through and the boxes are freaking empty. There's nothing in it. And then you clear out the whole room and it's like, what the hell? Right. What, what the American space program. In fact, I did a rant on this yesterday. Uh, I won't give you the whole thing, but I understood why we did it. It was, it was a smooth move. Uh, again, you're not old enough to remember, but in the 1960s, America was bulletproof. There was nothing. The rant was called impossible greatness, which was, we went for broke, which was the world believed, remember, the, the world was still rebuilding from World War II in the 1960s, except for us. We were just surging. We invented everything and did and we could do nothing wrong. And then somebody said, you know what? Let's do, let's do what the Roman Empire couldn't even dream of. We'll, we'll, we'll say we went to the moon. Are we going to the moon? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're going to tell people we did and they're going to believe it. And I know this because... As I've gone to other countries over the last nine years, you know, talking about this stuff, I ask people, I go, hey, you people in, uh, in Finland, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? doesn't matter what country I'm in. They all say the same thing. They say, well, because it was on television and your media would never lie about something like that because American media absolutely is 100% true. And I go, okay, so there's no fake news. Sorry, a little side thing for you. And people say, well, no, there's no fake news. I go, fine, resolve these two sentences. Everything on Fox News is absolutely true. And everything on CNN is absolutely true. Can't have both. So somebody's got to be fake. And then it's like, which means there is fake news. It's like, okay, what's the limit to that fake news? Come on, people lie all the time. There's a reason why Russia called us for years and years the empire of lies. We are the greatest show on earth. But that's what we are. We're a show. Right. We we paint ourselves as the white hats and we we want to be the greatest thing ever. So sorry, that ties into NASA, which is like, of course, we'd come up with that. That was our big exclamation point at the end of America is great, which is not only that, but we went to the moon. You got all the rest. You can suck it. Right. And people just looked at us with awe and wonder, even though our own people in 1972, when we stopped going to the moon, I mean, way before us. We had nerds in the 1970s going, hey, something doesn't look right, right? And they're, they're looking at all sorts of photos and videos. Mm -hmm. And as the computer technology came along, they're going, really, it doesn't really doesn't look right. And then once Photoshop was invented, oh, God, the whole thing just fell apart. People started opening everything up in Photoshop. And Photoshop showed the weakness of everything that was ever airbrushed and done before in, with the early versions of, of Photoshop that weren't for public. Oh, it was great stuff. Anyway, sorry. 
Well, I think that that is a, an excellent and very fitting conclusion to this interview. Thank you so much for, for agreeing to do this with me. It was immensely helpful. Is there anything more you want to say um, before we finish up? Because uh, I only have the meeting for like an hour. Oh, crap. Sorry. No no worries. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, no, don't the, worry. Tell me if the timer is going to kill us. Um, I can always call you back. But uh, real quick, again, I'm not here to convince or persuade anybody. Uh, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. All I tell people is like, look, I'm just giving you an idea. Do your own research. Figure it out for yourself. That's why we have a 99.9% retention rate. You know, people, once they get in, if you flip on our side, I didn't tear down the globe for you. You did. How do you put it back together? Mm -hmm. That's a very matrixy line, which is how do you go back into the matrix? If you're out, you can't. I will send you, uh, I will, once I'm done with this, I will email you, uh, the. I'll, I'll email you my whole playlist. I don't know how you found me exactly you know, my, my contact info, but I'll email you all my plays, but I'll focus on the, um, on the, uh, the, 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 the metrics and when the scoreboard was tied, you know, torn down and how we, how we got so big and what we were going up against, which was fun. Yeah. So is there anything else, in, any, any other resources you need from me? Uh, absolutely. Um, just, just what we've discussed in this video, uh, that dissertation would be very helpful. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, send, I'll send you the Sorbonne. I'll send you that right now too. Yeah. Uh, and I'll send you the link, uh, read it and, and, uh, let me know what you think. Cause that's the completed thing. And I think she did a, a great job. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this with me. It's, yeah. it's been an honor speaking with you. Thank no, you no, so no. much. Happy to um, do it. If anything else comes up, just drop me a line.